Okay, so in this exercise, we're going to be looking at making a water budget for Texas Lake. And I'm just, as a hypothetical lake, it's, this budget can be done on any type of lakes that, that we have out there. This kind of water budgeting is very important in our time where, um, especially currently where we have a lot of droughts happening, <clears throat> and we're seeing that a lot of the lake, a lot of the lakes are really low and uh, like a 30% capacity. And so we want to see what kind of uh, calculations <clears throat> uh, our environmental planners are doing um, around the state whenever they're looking at lakes. And so for an example of a lake, let's look here. Um, we have here an aerial photo of a lake. You can see here is the dam that's blocking this river and causing a reservoir to form behind it. In Texas, we only have one natural lake. All other lakes in Texas are artificial, caused by a dam blocking some kind of a valley area that gets that gets inundated with water. And so here we have a water elevation, for example, in our hypothetical lake of 6,391 feet. And that has a volume of just about 3 million acre feet and a subsurface area of 48,100 acres. So in our lake, in our hypothetical lake, we have uh, two kinds of, uh, three kinds of inputs. We have inputs coming just from the river, flowing water that comes in there, and that's that we can gauge. And we're using a gauging station. Um, a lot of rivers across the United States, you can see here, um, are gauged from the United States Geological Survey or the USGS. They have these, everywhere there's a dot here, there's a gauge. And with those gauges, you see these kind of little gauge houses next to rivers. And you can see here, inside there, they have an instrument that's measuring uh, the flow of the water. And because they know the cross-section of the river at that point, they can calculate the, the volume of water that goes through. Um, and that's, that's how they construct these um, gauge graphs. So here, for example, you have this cross-section and we, they surveyed the cross-section very well. And so the gauging station will be able to take the, the flow of water that's going through here and calculate it by this cross-section cross to get a volumetric flow. And so you can see here from our gauging uh, station, uh, we have here um, eight inches are coming just from rain on top of the lake. So just rains on the lake. So that's one part of where the water's coming from. Another part is runoff, so when it rains, it runs off the land here into the rivers. And then the river, we gauge it to measure how much is going through here. And we're having 150,000 acre feet come per year. And then we also have ungaged runoff. So imagine we have the gauging station here. All the runoff that's coming from here on this Hudson Bend, for example, is coming directly into the stream after the gauging station. So we're not having that gauged. And so it's estimated that that um, ungaged runoff plus groundwater inflow, so water actually flows through the ground and enters into the lake through the banks. This estimated here that that's coming in at 37,000 uh, 37, acre per year. And then we have evaporation, so the water is, being, is evaporating out of the lake at 40, 45 inches per year. So our goal here is to make a water budget showing all the inputs and the outputs and find out what kind of balance is there between the inputs and outputs. And so the first thing we're going to want to do is convert everything. And the way we're going to convert it all is we have to convert all the units into acre feet per year. Um, and so I'm going to use Excel to do this. And so if you look here, we have our, precip our precipitation of 8 inches. Per year so we go here I'm gonna just uh, say here my precip is going to be eight inches per year eight and I know that that let me just insert here so I know that this is inches per year and I know that I have um, I want to convert that to feet. And so, so I know that there's 12 inches in every foot. 
So I know that there's 12 inches in every foot. And so if I want to convert that, I'm going to have to, to divide um, everything by 12. So I'm going to sit here. I'm going to say equals to 8 divided by 12. And that's going to give me 0 0.666 going on forever, <laughs> 7 feet per year. So that makes it into feet per year. Because I know that the area of the lake is 4, uh, 48,100 acres, I can take this feet per year calculation and then multiply it by the 40, 48,000 to get my acre feet per year. So here is my acre feet per year, and that's going to equal to the amount of rain times the area the coverage of the rain. And so now I have 32,067 acre feet per year. So that's how much rain's coming in. And then now we want to also, so that's, that was one thing that we need to convert into acre feet. The other thing that we need to convert into acre feet, because you can see the other stuff is already in acre feet, is the um, evaporation. And so for the evaporation, we had uh, 45 inches per year evaporating. So this is going to be the same type of calculation. So our evaporation was 45 inches per year. We are multiplying, I mean we're dividing that by 12. So I hit the equal sign, I click on this cell, and then I say divided by 12. That lets me find out that we're having 3.75 feet per year evaporating. And then we're going to multiply that again by the area. So equal sign this one times 48 100 and so then we see here that we have 180,000 uh, 375 acre feet per year so already just looking at these two numbers um, if I format these cells you can uh, make it a little bit cleaner so you can see if I click on number and change the number of decimal places and say for example to one and use the thousand separators makes it easier to read. So we already see from here that if there was no inputs from the from uh, the stream, from the river flow in or the groundwater flow, we would not have a lake because it's evaporating more than it's raining in this area. And so there has to be other inputs. Um, so if we go here, we want to look at all the inputs and we want to compare them to the output. And so for our output right now, we have our evaporation, which we have 180,375. That's one of our outputs. For our inputs, we have our rain, which is going to be at 32,000. And, uh, 67 and these are all in acre feet per year now and then we have our stream flow which we can see from here our stream flow was at 150,000 acre from that was from the gauge and so that's 150,000 and then our groundwater inflow and our ungaged runoff was equaling to 37,000. So I put here 37,000. So this is ungaged flows. And so these are all of our inputs, and this is our output. So for our total, let me just do this. I'll put it over here. Here's our outputs. And so for here, we have a total. And so for our total of our inputs and our outputs, I can just say here equals to and sum. These are Excel formulas. So if I type sum, it calls up the function sum. And then I can uh, do the open parenthesis, and then I can click, hold the mouse, and highlight all the things I want to sum together and close the parentheses. That's going to give me my total out, uh, out inputs of, of 219,067. And then for our total output, it's just going to be equal to the evaporation. Um, 
also the you know there's also controlled flows that the uh, that the dam operator will be able to uh, open and close the dam to release some. So, but the question here that we're looking at is just budget-wise: is this lake rising or falling? And so, from this calculation here, we can see that our inputs is greater than our outputs. So, let me just do that format cell thing again, make it a little bit easier to read. So, format cell number just take off the decimal for the thousands and so I can see here I have 219,000 as my input and 180,000 as my output and so there's a difference here and the inputs greater so the lake level will rise and that gives us to our because our inputs are greater than output so will the average lake level rise or fall over the long term and um, because our inputs are greater than our outputs and our only output currently is evaporation, the lake level will rise. Um, and this also gives the dam operator, if I look at the difference between the inputs and the outputs, the dam operator has uh, 38,692 acre feet per year that they can use to, for example, generate electricity by passing that water through the dam. Um, in times of drought, for example, this precipitation might go down to zero, for example. And then we might end up with a situation like here where you have very low, uh, very equal numbers between inputs and outputs. Imagine also our ungauged flow becomes zero because there's no, there's no rain. And so we have a situation here where our inputs become less than our outputs. And so here the, the lake level will fall. But fortunately, in this example, we have rain and we have uncaged flow. And so that's, the, that's how we do a water budget.